Hey buddies, Potato McWhiskey here. In this video, we're gonna be looking at monuments and granaries with a big focus on which one you should build first in newly settled cities. I'll happily admit that the premise of this video is a little bit of a bait because there's actually more choices than just the monument and granary, but we'll save talking about them for another video because every variable choice we add increases the number of tests I have to run exponentially. With two choices, we only have to test two scenarios. With three choices, we have to test nine, and it only gets worse the more choices and variables that we add. When you consider the number of variables that are in game, like city location, civ, city states, tiles, techs, eurekas, etc., it becomes very fuzzy and difficult to test things concretely. So we'll be creating a reasonable test case to assess whether a monument or granary is better first. Of course, astute observers will note that Rome doesn't have to make this choice at all, considering all of their cities start with a free monument. But aside from that outlier, let's take a look at what monuments and granaries actually do and why we're comparing them. Monuments provide plus one loyalty to a city per turn, plus one culture per turn, and if the city is at maximum loyalty, they provide an extra plus one culture per turn for a total of plus two culture per turn for the total cost of 60 production. Granaries, on the other hand, provide plus one food per turn, plus two housing, and they cost 65 production. We're comparing both of these buildings because they are both available very early on into the game, often being the only things that you can build in your second and third city before you've unlocked districts. They cost reasonably similar amounts of production as well, which makes them very comparable in my mind. A general rule of thumb I've found and have been following and have found people talking about in the wider community is that if the city is founded on fresh water and you're choosing between a monument and granary, then you should build the monument first since the vast majority of the granary's bonuses are housing, which don't become an issue until you start running out of housing. Housing and amenities are going to be subject to another video, but the important bit of information that you need is that when you're one population away from your housing limit, your excess growth is halved. That's why we're going to be looking at examples where cities are founded off of freshwater, and specifically in this example, coastal cities. In the first example, we're going to be looking at the city of Ulm, which is settled coastally and has two grassland hill tiles. It can work for two food, one production, and a maximum housing of three. That means when the city grows in eight turns, the plus two food surplus it will be producing will be halved, meaning it will take 24 turns to grow to three population instead of the normal 12 turns it would take. Population growth rates and food requirements will also be the subject of another video, but again, I'm trying to keep things simple and small in scope for the sake of brevity of this video, which is already far longer than I ever intended it to be. We're taking grassland hills as our example because they represent a reasonable tile to work when a city is newly founded, but there are variations of the terrain you'll encounter in the game that might also be subject to exploration at a later date. We're going to be running two trials and making sure that our citizens are always working two food, one production tiles to keep things consistent. Then we'll be comparing the status of the city at the end of those trials to see if he can help us make a decision. In the first trial, we select Monument first, which takes 20 turns, and the city will grow an 8, granting us another production from working another grassland hill tile. That will shave another 3 turns off of the monument, which means it took a total of 17 turns to build that monument. Once the monument was completed, it took another 17 turns to make the granary, which means in total it took 34 turns to build the monument and granary. If we want a really good comparison though, we're going to have to take a look at the total resources produced by the city over time. We're also running the urban planning card in this example to give each city plus one production since that's one of the best early game cards and we're having a look at the early game it seemed like something reasonable to do. However there may be scenarios worth testing without it and just like that I can see the never ending variables of this test opening up a giant maw underneath me ready to swallow me with data. Anyway, let's break down the city's output based whenever the city's yields changed in some way, whether it being a population growing or a building completing. For the first eight turns of the city, it was producing 0.3 culture per turn, 0.5 science per turn, and three production per turn. That's a total of 2.4 culture, four science, and 24 production over those eight turns. The city grew a population after that, and for the next nine turns, the city was producing 0.6 culture per turn, one science per turn, and four production per turn for a total of 5.4 culture, 
9 science and 36 production. Once the monument was finished, the city was producing 2.6 culture per turn, 1 science per turn and 4 production per turn. For a total of 36.4 culture, 14 science and 56 production. It took the city another 3 turns to finish the granary, during which it produced 2.8 culture per turn, 1.4 science per turn and 4.8 production per turn for a total of 4.8 culture and 4.2 science and 14.4 production. The observant among you might notice that the city's yields didn't grow the way you expected for the final phase and that's because at 3 population the city now has a negative 1 amenity which reduces the yields of the city by 5%. It also reduces the growth rate by 15% but rather than track the total food output of the city I tracked it by just tracking how fast the city was growing and when the population actually grew. There's a lot of variables and the more I eliminate the simpler our analysis becomes. Amenities will probably be the subject of a future video but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. In total, over the 34 turns of the trial, the city earned 52.6 culture, 31.2 science and 130.4 production. If we take a look at this data in graph form, we can see all the data we gathered about the city in a single image in a highly customizable graph thanks to Google Sheets that took me about two hours just to learn how to do because the tutorials for this are incredibly out of date and it was the biggest barrier to me working on videos like this. Thankfully though, now that I've learned I'll be able to mo make more videos like this in future and I'll be able to make more videos like this in future by learning from our totally not sponsoring this video Skillshare which is an online learning platform who if they do want to sponsor my videos should totally go ahead and send me an email because I've already demonstrated I can easily shoehorn in a plug for their service into my tutorial videos. <laughs> anyway, you could very easily see the effect of the population growth and monument on the yields of the cities, with the lines inclining sharply as new buildings are finished and the population has grown. This graph on its own isn't very useful because we're trying to compare it to a situation where we build granary first. The really cool thing about this graph is because I recorded all the data, I can even plug in the time to build things in the population growth rate to compare. But let's run the granary trial first. The trial opens much the same as the first first one for the first eight turns. 0.3 culture and 0.5 science and 3 production per turn for a total of 24 production, 2.4 culture and 4 science. The city grows and the yields per turn become 0.6 culture, 1 science and 4 production per turn and this continues on for another 11 turns until the granary finishes for a total of 6.6 .6 culture, 11 science and 44 production. When the granary finishes the city's yields don't actually change but the time to grow drops significantly from 13 turns to 4. So we'll add another 4 turns of yields to the previous phase which is an extra 2.4, 4 and 16 culture, science and production respectively. Once the city does grow the yields jump to 0.9 culture, 1.4 science and 4.8 production per turn with 9 turns until we finish the monument. The city generated 8.1 culture, 12.6 science and 43.2 production over those 9 turns. With the monument completed the yields jumped up to 2.8 culture, 1.4 science and 4.8 production with 4 turns to grow to 4 population. However this trial finished its build queue 2 turns earlier than the other trial so we'll add two more turns of yields on top. The total yield from the city was 25.1 culture, 34.4 science and 136.8 production. If we compare those results to the monument trial, we can see that you make a very marginable amount more production and science going granary first, coming out ahead with 3.2 more science and 6.4 more production, but a whopping 27.5 culture behind in total. Assuming that all of these have the same value to a player, that means monument first comes in at a total of 17.9 yields ahead. That could easily shave a few turns off your civics compared to the first run. You'll notice and appreciate that I used yellow and purple as the colors for the comparison charts, trial 1 being in yellow and trial 2 being in purple, which is what the internet told me is the best way to contrast for all types of color blindness. If the internet has been lying to me again I'll be deeply upset, if you are colorblind give me a shout out in the comments by the way. So that's it settled then alright, going monument first is better even in non freshwater cities if you want to get more total yields. Well not quite, there's a few considerations like the fact that we are abstracting food in this example to simplify things. Technically speaking if we were to account for the total food yields then the first trial may very well come out behind if we're valuing everything the same. However I think abstracting food as growth is fine since food isn't a yield that does anything on its own, it's a tool used to obtain other yields by supporting citizens citizens working tiles, growing new population to work tiles and building new districts by hitting population milestones. It has no intrinsic value in that sense. 
whereas production, culture and science all have intrinsic values for researching things and building things. Now after running both of these trials I realised that just taking a snapshot of when both of them are finished isn't the greatest representation of which is best, but I'm already about 8 hours into making this video and that's already an absurd amount of time to spend on things. I'm never one to leave a sleeping dog lie though, so we're going to be expanding the scope of our test to include another variable. We're going to build a builder after each, build three mines, and see how our graphs continue to diverge after letting the experiment run for another 10 turns after finishing the builder. Keep in mind, I haven't even scratching the surface of what we can test here, and I expect I could spend the next year testing variations of this to see which outcome is best in which situations. Rather than exhaustively quote the numbers at you again, because this video is getting pretty long, the monument first city took 13 turns to build a builder, which lined up nicely with the growth rate. Inexplicably, the game decided to assign an amenity to my city, which had me a bit confused, but I'm not going to question it since it happened consistently in multiple trials on both tests. I let the city go on for another 10 turns, and it ended with 3.2 culture, 2 science and 9 production per turn. The total yields over that time, including the initial trial, were 124.6 culture, 72 science and 290 production, with 25 turns to go until it reached population 5. The granary first trial I ran the exact same experiment with the builder and added a bunch of turns until its total of number of turns matched the first trial. The total yields for the granary first run were 99.1 culture, 80.2 science and 313 production with 18 turns until it reached population 5. If we compare these two, going monument first into granary into a builder with 3 mines, you end up about 25 culture ahead, but you're behind 8.2 science and 23 production compared to going granary first into monument into builder. If we compare the graphs again, it allows us to visualise the data and you can see that the monument first build scooches ahead slightly with culture over time, but starts to fall behind slightly compared to granary first when it comes to science and production. If we compare the total yields graph, there is a very slight margin in favour of the monument first over the early game, assuming we value production, science and culture equally and are discarding food, whereas the granary first build starts to win out overall in terms of value in the long run. What conclusions can we make from this testing? It might seem at first glance that Granary First is the go-to choice for long-term play, and that's probably true overall, although I would like to be able to definitively test that empirically, which I think I kind of failed to do in this video. I would say that there's some evidence that Granary First is better in the long run, but there is a big chunk of that graph where Monument First is ahead on total yields. And one of the most important things to remember in Civ and in life is that stuff now is worth more than stuff later. Later, and that window of having a higher culture gain might lead you to unlock wonders, districts and cards a couple of turns sooner which could be the difference between getting those wonders efficiently and building up your empire really quickly. The real takeaway here is that there's a lot more testing to be done and that in a city without freshwater both granary and monument are fairly similar in terms of value in the long run but the same logic won't apply to cities on freshwater. If you guys have ideas on how I can test this more rigorously and any other test you'd like to see me run go ahead and leave a comment. Also, these kinds of videos take an exceptionally long time to make, so if you'd like to see more of them, go ahead and become a member of the channel by clicking join to subscribe like you would to a Twitch channel. More money for me means more time focusing on making better videos for you lovely people. I do plan a follow-up video with a lot more data, where we test quite a few different configurations so that we can learn a more robust understanding of which choice is better and which situations those choices are better in. I hope you all have a lovely day. I love you all very much. I'm sorry I didn't answer the question definitively, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.